300 and um, about 21 votes. And he was also apportioned because he didn't win in the first instance that vote he had. About 83,000 votes. He insisted and took, he took me to this tribunal and wanted the tribunal to cancel certain world elections, certain unions elections. He came with a pseudo result which he actually cooked from his house. Total of 61,229 votes. Went to the tribunal and wanted the tribunal to take it. He did all manners of things. Things that are unethical. But the tribunal still said it was unfair for them to refuse my victory that was God-given and God-driven and people-driven victory. That was on the first instance, on the 23rd of February 2019. And so he went to the Court of Appeal. On the 9th of November, the Court of Appeal granted him a prayer that he never sought for by asking that we should go for a rerun in his very local government area which he visited mayhem on the people of his local government area. And from a local government area, I have never one day asked the people, fight the people, buy guns for the people. I have never done it. He won in my local government, he had 6,000 votes, where I had 18,000 votes, in spite of the fact that I created that local government area. I lobbied the federal government of Abacha in 1996 to agree. That didn't bother because I didn't give guns. I said you should vote for anybody they like. But in some local government, he did all manners of things to get a pseudo vote of 105,555, which is not attainable, it's not found anywhere. And so the Court of Appeal granted him a prayer that he never wanted that we should go for a rerun in that local government area. Suffice it to say that they wanted him to go out and get 105,555 eh, votes. And we went to the trench and I said, God, come and give this judgment. Before then, the only accredited vote of voters on the 23rd of February 2019 was 19,455. How do you come by 105,555? Whereas the accredited voters that went into the server, INEX server in Abuja, from each unit was 19,455. So we wanted to go and prove whether those people, whether they are ghosts or they are human beings, that they will come and vote 105,555. So on the 25th of this month, we went to get the result of the people. Whereas he had told the entire nation and the world and the listening world that he, were, he has declined, which by the provision of section 66 1 of 1999 constitution as amended, any public officer that is to contest election must resign 30 days before the election. So he, because of the way our justice system is being manipulated in Nigeria, he felt he could go to the election without resigning. Then he flew a kite that he has, he's not contesting. He's not contesting. He felt to know that I'm a veteran in this, guy. In this matter. <laughs> I started from Fred Polteni Bida. Go and check the record. We were only four from my state, but I became the Students' Union president. In 1979. So I'm, I'm a real Nigerian. But I can win an election even in Sokoto. <laughs> so I went into the trench and campaign. And he was sitting down. On Friday 2.25 a.m. He called everybody out in, from his party. And said he was just deceiving me. He wanted me to play down so that I will, you know. I will not, you know, put up my arsenals and roll out money, which I will not mention, to all the 159 units, to all the agents 
that they should go and vote for him. They want to prove a point to Nigeria that he is determined to come back to the Senate. And rubbish me. When I was a deputy governor, he was my commissioner. The fact that he became a governor was by an accident, was an act of accident because of our electoral process that is porous. And that is why thank God I've come back to meet the discussion on the electoral <laughs> act <laughs> amendment. Because I'm going to contribute what I have seen practically. The electoral, the, the, the electoral uh, bill and act must be looked into properly to give Nigerians the opportunity to choose their leaders. So, by the grace of God, we went into, into the election and I defeated him resoundingly. I had 19,000 plus votes and he had 6,000 votes. <laughs> when you add that to my in previous votes, government. in his local government, even in his unit, he had a margin of just a little. He had 700 and, 702 votes, while I had 600 and plus where, votes. So where he voted? Where he voted? At, <laughs> at Independent High School. Independent <laughs> High School. <laughs> Okara. Where he comes from. That is allowed. A margin of about 100 votes. Because no matter what, I didn't carry my war to him because I have no war. The only weapon of war was my finger, the finger of a God that destroyed the wall of a Jericho. And I ensure that the wall of Jericho fall down flat. <laughs> and so I defeated him. And because he had told me that he had, you know, he's, he's very boastful. He had told me openly. He invited me for a meeting when I came back from Gambia on the 7th of last month that he, he manipulated the legal system. Yes, he told me. And that is why that they should not have stopped me from being a member of the Senate because of one local government. It was because of his intervention. Could you imagine that? Is that a leader in Nigeria? Is that what we are looking for? I'm ashamed of him. I'm, I don't know whether the president had gotten good security, you know, information about him and his, his upbringing, his education, his workplace, his attitude and attitude. Forget about it. He was a governor of the state because he misdirected and he misinvested. Go to a quiet room. There's nothing. When you talk of uncommon, what is uncommon? Okay, because it's uncommon failure. <laughs> So, gentlemen and ladies, I thank all of you that I am back into the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as a victorious senator, eh? appropriately elected by the people of Akwaibom, not the eh? West. And this morning, I have been inaugurated the second time. How I wish that the Constitution has allowed me so that you can start counting that today is the day I have started a new journey. And by implication, I'm supposed to be a ranking senator because this is my second return. So I thank all of you for giving me the opportunity to, you know, share this view with you. But all, most importantly, our electoral act has to be reviewed to give opportunity. People are talking of electronic voting system. Yes, the electronic voting system would have been too good if every Nigerians are educated. But when you look at the poor, the uneducated in the farm, I think the what we could do or we should do now is to ensure that the card reader, the card reader become a device, a very strong device, both in the accreditation and in the determination of who votes at the elections. And it must be the, count, the card leader that determines the vote that is being casted. And not just saying, when we go to the court, the court will tell you the card leader is just a mere device. It's not recognized by law. So we must make sure that the card leader is recognized by law. That, go ahead and do that. Go ahead and read between lines. What I then told you was that there were, there were uh, eight, um, what do you call, units. Do you not watch, or you, have you not gone through your social media to see that on that day, on that faithful day, that over 70 coppers 
and electoral officers and materials were carted away into the governor, I mean, uh, uh, Senator Gosper Pabio's brother's house, called him uh, Ibn Pabio, yeah. eh? to fill the form. Because why he's been fighting Mike Kini? Mike Kini is not my brother. I've only met Mike Kini twice. The first time was, was when Gosper Pabio made an open statement and says that election in Akwaibom will only last for th three hours. hours. Then I was not drafted into the trench by the people. I was coming back from my farm, from my rice farm in Ine. And I had the news. I said, I can. How would you say the election will be finished in uh, three hours? So I now sought to ask for the phone number of Mike Guinea, the electoral officer, the red, in Akwaibom. Then somebody supplied me. So I called him. I introduced myself. He said, I know you. I said, I'm the former deputy governor of Akwaibom, sister. I want to see you. He said, you can come. And I drove straight from my farm to his office. And I met him. I said, sir, I heard on the radio now where he's reporting that Gospel of Bible says that in a Bible, election will last for three hours. Please, tell me. He tell for me that we, there's no point to go for a campaign. I mean, <laughs> then the man to, called two of his directors and then said, Yes, I said, repeat what you said. And I repeated. Then I demand, the man says, in the Quaibum state, foot will uh, count. Dollars and Naira will not uh, count. <laughs> hmm? So I stood up and left. So fortunately, I never knew that people would come and call me to contest. So they called me to contest. So I contested and believing that that is what that man told me. So uh, I hooked up to that. So he's been draw, doing all manners of things to remove that man from Quaibum. Because over the time, he has not, there had not been an election in the Quaibum. When he was a governor, there was no election. All he does is to roll out the resources to those that we receive from him and then write the result and announce. If you look at the record, in 2015, how many votes this Buhari scored, President Buhari scored in the Quaibum? Because he was the, the lead man. He was the man leading. He was abusing the man everywhere. And then he wrote the result. This is the man he says. The man cannot read. He cannot interpret budget. Abi, today he's lucky to be a minister under him. <laughs> eh? So, the same thing he has been fighting, thinking that somebody at the kidney will be removed so they can get a electoral officer who will take his dollar and then write the result and announce what he has written in his house. So, God, have you not seen that God has vindicated us? The vindication is that even in the run, which he said he was not going to run, which he ran. He brought the DIG, he pocketed the DIG, and he wanted him to do what he thinks he should do, and God prevailed. And then that, he packed all those people to his brother's house to start feeling. And the information came to me. And he forgot that in, on, the, on the 16th, I mean on the same 23rd, that I arrested 162 talks that he hired from Edo. I Edo people talks. No. This shouldn't be talks. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> uh, 16 buses. I arrested them because I'm I'm at the border. I'm in Oburokara. Oburokara with Shebandi Urumoya. So they were coming through there, and I arrested all of them 162. I took them to the police station and they 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 were marched from Oburokara police station to the headquarters of the police in Uyo. The next night, they were all released. released. So the same thing happened. So when this one came to me, I called one young man in the security that is from the office of the IGP here. I said, please, can you go to that house and get the people there and see what they are doing. They have cut away, I think, six or seven units. Eh? I wouldn't know how many of how many votes each of the units had, but they carted away six or seven units with all those number of ucopers and electoral officers to Ibn Akwabi's house. So the man went, or the security forces went, and cut off the place, and then others started jumping the fence, eh? and then they arrested them with all these materials and took them to the police eh, headquarters which I had yesterday, that those people have been released, courtesy of the DIG who came. Because the DIG started questioning the young man. 
how do you come by these people? Then the young man called me and said, look, that DIG came on a, a purpose that you will not uh, realize. So those are the units that I next say they cannot entertain the yes. result. Yeah. And to that extent, they discounted on that result because they discounted on that result no election had been cancelled. They only cancelled elections of those units that were not properly, you know, conducted. Period. So as I came here, I would not have entered and be sworn in the Senate without my certificate. Now where is my certificate? <laughs> Give it to me. Let me show this man. I have a certificate of a return that shows that I contested an election. My friend, read where you were. Read here. This is my second certificate of a return. The first one is still there in my box. And I've gotten the second one. So I'm having two. You are owing me. Eh? I'm a ranking senator. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Congratulations. Thank you. God bless you. You are the leader. Come to my office. Okay, sir.